Welcome to OmniTalk powered by Nexoft. I'm your host, Amy Rice, and OmniTalk is a podcast focusing on fintech and how it affects banks and credit unions. On today's episode, Star Largan, director of VCSO for Nexoft, will be talking about VCSO, what it is, and why it's so important for banks and credit unions to form a comprehensive cybersecurity plan. Okay, so today I have Star Largan on with me. She is the director of the VCSO product at Nexoft. How are you doing, Star? Doing great. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you on, Star. So for those listeners who don't know, Nexoft is actually comprised of a few different divisions, one of which is Threat Advice, which focuses on cyber education and cybersecurity. Star, could you talk a little bit more about what Threat Advice does? Yes, I'll be glad to. First of all, Threat Advice is a cybersecurity solution. We designed it to help all institutions, regardless of what type of industry they may be with. Uh, we started our cybersecurity solution in 2017 with ongoing cybersecurity education and phishing for all of their employees. But in 2019, we wanted to expand our solution to provide them with a complete cybersecurity package. However, we do have various package op options that they can select from. They can select one of the pre-designed packages or they can build their own package based on the needs of their institution. We've done that, Amy, for many different reasons. Uh, it's basically to help them with the needs of their institution, but also to help them with budget issues. It might not be in their budget this year to have the complete cybersecurity package. However, they might need that, but they might need certain items right now, immediately. We will allow them to design their own package. And what we prefer to do is on that package, just do it for a one year term. Then at the end of that term, Depending on their budget issues, they might be able to increase their package to the complete cyber security package. So we're here to help all of the institutions get cyber ready and to meet the needs of their institution. And a lot of times we can save them money. What is VCSO and why did Nexoft see a need for this solution? In 2019, if you think about that year, it seemed like every time you turn on the news, Another company had gotten hacked. Information is being held for ransom. It did not matter what type of institution it was, whether it's a financial institution, government agencies, healthcare, they were all being hacked. So what we did at that time is we wanted to develop a solution to help everybody out because we knew that a lot of institutions, especially the smaller ones, they did not have a complete IT department. A lot of times they might have had an IT director, but a lot of times that individual is wearing multiple hats, getting pulled in many different directions. With our VC solution, we have a team of experts for cybersecurity. That's all they do. And they're going to become a part of your team. So you're going to be increasing your staff without having to pay a large salary without having to pay benefits, worry about them being on vacation, you're going to have access to our team 24-7. Now, within that complete package of VC, so they're going to get many different solutions, many different features, such as we provide them with the IT security policy templates. If you've ever had to write policies, unless you're one of a million, most people do not like to write policies. They like to start with the policy template. We provide them with all of their IT security policy templates. They're in a Word document, so they can take it and customize it to their institution. But then we also do vulnerability scans, both internal and external, and we do those monthly. We do an annual IT risk assessment. In addition to the IT risk assessment, a lot of companies, they'll come in, they'll do the risk assessment. They'll give them the report, outlining all of the findings, and then they wait. It's up to that company to determine exactly what they need to implement for each one of those findings. When we do the annual IT risk assessment, we give you the report, but then we take it a step further. 
we're going to provide you with a plan of action and help you develop what you need to implement for each one of those findings based on the severity of each one of those items. We also include the ongoing cybersecurity training and phishing for all of their employees. But in addition to that, we do annual cybersecurity board training. Financial institutions have to have annual cybersecurity board training. And a lot of your institutions, regardless if it's a financial institution, healthcare, they're all looking for ways to train their board. So we provide them with that as well. Uh, the whole package comes with a $500,000 warranty. If you're a VC so client of ours and you have a breach, you have a plan that will go in place immediately covering up to $500,000 cost, not only covering our team to get you up and going, but also covering other costs that might occur from having a breach, such as ransom, legal expenses, and various other things. At the first of the year, a lot of your regulatory agencies had told, did an announcement telling financial institutions, especially you need to have a plan in place. Worst case scenario, event of a breach, what are you going to do? This will show them that they're being proactive. They've got a game plan that will go in effect immediately due to the fact that they ever have a breach. That's all covered within VC, so up to $500,000. And if you'll look at the news every day, not only financial institutions, right now you've got school systems. They're the same way. Knowing that they have a plan in place in the event of a breach should be where it will save them a lot of headache and a lot of hours, hours of worrying about what their game plan would be. So why should financial institutions be thinking about VCSO when it comes to protecting their customers and also their assets? Well, let's think about what type of information do they have on their customers? If a customer is opening up a deposit account, it doesn't matter if it's savings or checking, first thing they're going to have to give them is their name, their address, their social security number. They'll have their account number, payments, ACH information, the list goes on and on. But if they're applying for a loan, think about how much information they have, especially on a mortgage loan. On a mortgage loan, they're having to provide them with so much information, such as their proof of salary, their W-2s, their tax returns, a lot of times for the last couple of years, bank statements, all of that sensitive data information on all of their customers makes them a prime candidate for a hacker. So for financial institutions, they're the ones that sitting out there waiting on somebody to actually try to hack into their system because everybody knows financial institutions have so much information on all of their customers regardless of what type of customer it may be so how should financial institutions prepare themselves in terms of cybersecurity? financial institutions need to implement solutions to help protect their data with solutions such as pen testing, vulnerability scans, updating their policies. They've probably had policies, IT security policies for years, but when's the last time that they updated them? Are they up to date with all of the regulatory requirements? They need to do annual IT risk assessment. This helps them to identify some weaknesses that they might have within their system. A lot of companies, a lot of financial institutions and other companies as well, they'll outsource that to a third party to come in and do an annual IT risk assessment. If they're a financial institution, they also need to do their annual FFIEC assessment. These are only a few items, but it is many tasks that they have to do within their IT staff. Now, these items will, are going to help them identify their weaknesses that they have within their system, but they need to make sure that they document it. But they also need to have a plan. How often are they going to do these items? On pen testing, are they doing it annually? Vulnerability scans, how often?
often monthly, quarterly, whatever their schedule is that they set, they need to make sure that they are abiding by it. The worst thing that a financial institution can do is say that I'm going to be doing pen testing every year and then the regulators come in and look and they haven't done it for two years or 18 months. They're going to write them up for that. So they need to set precautions in place, solutions, and then develop a system where they are going to keep up with how frequently that they're going to do those items and to make sure that they're doing it. And they always need to make sure that the documentation is there. With the regulators, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. They don't care if you did it. It has to be documented. You have to have the documentation to back it up. And when you do items like uh, pen testing, vulnerability spins, be sure that it's in your board minutes, in your IT committee minutes, that you've discussed those reports and those findings with them and make sure it is documented. Also in 2010, compliance was a hot topic regulatory compliance, but now regulatory compliance is taking a back seat and now it's cybersecurity. It's the new hot topic. Most financial institutions, they might have the staff that handles IT, but years ago when someone mentioned IT among financial institutions, everybody thought of core processing. That's all they thought about. When you mentioned IT, what's your core processing? Now, over the years, we've had so much technology improvements that now we have the ability to offer customers internet banking, debit cards, mobile banking. With all of those improvements came risk. So the team that you had back years ago, it might have been a team of one person. Is that one person able to handle everything that IT has to handle today? No. A lot of times you're having to outsource those things. It doesn't matter if you outsource it or if you're doing in-house. The main thing is to make sure that you're doing it, document everything, check and recheck, and always have separation of duties. Um, so what trends do you expect to see in 2021 for financial institutions um, regarding cybersecurity? In 2021, you're probably going to see an increase of hacking occurrences throughout the United States, especially within financial institutions. Now, we have seen that happen in 2020 and even before that in 2019. Due to the fact of all of the hacking occurrences that we've had over the years and with the increase that I predict for 2021, I feel like regulatory examinations is going to be probably more detailed than ever before before. In 2020, we saw that examiners were recommending financial institutions to have, have a SIM in place. Now, what a SIM is, it's a security information and event management solution. And it's a software that gathers activity from many different resources across their entire IT infrastructure. The SIM collects all of that security data from like their network device their servers, their domain controllers, and all of the infrastructure of the institution. That is what a SIM is. And right now, regulators are telling financial institutions that they need to have one in place. They're suggesting it. I think in 2021, it's going to change. I feel like a SIM is going to be a requirement instead of a recommendation. My last question for you um, is a fun one. If you could have dinner with anyone living or dead, who would it be and why? Well, I guess my answer is going to be different than a lot of people's. A lot of people would probably answer with a movie star, with an uh, NFL player, with a singer or different things. With mine, I guess it's more sentimental. It would be with my mom and dad. My mom and dad are deceased. Uh, my mom passed away and years ago and then my dad passed away seven years after my mom and we were very close. I respected their opinion on a lot of things and the guidance that they provided not only me but my kids and grandkids as well. So to be able to sit down with them again and have just one more meal with them would be great. That's a really great answer. They seem like amazing people.
That's the last question I had for you, Star. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. This episode of OmniTalk was sponsored by Nexoft. Nexoft is your all-in-one stop to help your company secure, connect, and optimize your data. Welcome to Data Done Right. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of OmniTalk. As always, stay safe and stay well.